Hi there. Welcome to another episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. My name's Matt Bingle. I'm one of the co-hosts and the editor for this episode. I would like to welcome you to our 200th episode. Can you believe it? We can't. And chances are you can't either. (laughs) What better way to celebrate our 200th episode than with a really, really big guest? This is a huge honor for us because our guest today is the puppeteer of Bert Grover and Oscar the Grouch on Sesame Street and Fozzie Bear, Animal, and Miss Piggy. Eric Jacobson is our special guest, and we are so honored that he's our guest for this very special 200th episode. Now, if you'll excuse me, I better play the intro. I'll see you in about 30 seconds, and I'll be back at the end for some final thoughts. Now, I better say the magic words. Roll it! I've always wanted to do that. Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. I'll be here with us. Thank you for joining. As always, I'm your host, Jake Duffenbaugh. I'm here today, as always, our co-host, Chris Bixby and Matt Bingo. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good. Hello, everybody. How are you, Jake? I'm doing great, Matt. Thank you for asking. Wonderful. Chris, what do you have for today? Yes, today's guest is a puppeteer who, since the 90s, has been one of the lead Muppet performers on Sesame Street and the Muppets, inheriting classic characters such as Grover, Bert, Oscar, Miss Piggy, Fozzie, Animal, various others. He was also a puppeteer on Bear in the Big Blue House, The Book of Pooh, and many more that we'll touch base on later. Here he is, Eric Jacobson. Eric, happy to have you here. Hey, howdy. <laughs> How you doing? Howdy, howdy. Doing, doing great. great. Doing Thank you. Great. Yes, so for those who don't know you, could you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and what you do? Uh, sure, yeah. Well, I think you kind of hit some of the highlights there. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I'm a puppeteer, both with the Sesame Workshop, working on Sesame Street, performing, like you said, Bert and Grover, Oscar the Grouch now, and uh, uh, one half of the Two-Headed Monster, and Guy Smiley when he makes uh, an appearance. And, um, and then over with Disney, I work with the classic Muppet Show characters. And um, I've been doing that uh, since, like, eh, let's just say the early 2000s. And, uh, yeah, so before before um, uh, it changed hands, before it actually was, um, everything moved over to Disney. So uh, in all of this, actually, you know, it all started um, with the Jim Henson Company. And that's uh, that's where I started. I, I started out as an intern at the Jim Henson Company um, uh, in college, and um, so that was that was kind of my my entrance into all of this. Uh, I was a film student at NYU, and um, and this is like right. Uh, let's see. I think. I think my first year there, Jim Henson passed away, and that kind of uh, sent me reeling. And and you know when I stopped spinning, when my head stopped spinning, I was pointed in a new direction, and uh, I I just knew I had to do something to help continue this great man's legacy. That's awesome. So. In terms of like, you know, Sesame Street, how did you uh, first begin working for them? Yeah, so I was in New York. I had that internship um, with the Jim Henson Company. And it was there that, um, you know, I I learned of these puppeteer workshops that they would hold every now and then. And uh, Sesame Street... Um, in particular, was in need of a, a lot of new, um, 
a lot of new blood because they had just expanded their set and it, it was called around the corner oh yes and they had to populate mm -hmm. this set with a lot of characters and so and and they uh had a lot of other productions that were up and running too at the same time so they just really needed a lot of a lot of new puppeteers and uh, i learned about these workshops and um i was i was um a puppeteer with a company a theater company in new york at the time and i was i was um really honing my skills there and just on my own too uh and um and i i just you know i, I said hey can i sit in on one of these workshops i did jane henson was running the workshop i gleaned a lot from just sitting in on this workshop and i went back um to uh my dorm and i just worked on everything that i saw them do and uh and then eventually was able to uh find myself invited to a workshop to participate and I did a, a number of those, a, a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, let's see. I and, and I remember it being at one of these workshops and uh, Jane Henson um, was running it. And afterwards, in front of everybody, she said, uh, and Eric, you've been working with us uh um for a little bit now right and i said uh no but I, I can start right away if you want me to um it was the most amazing um flattering compliment that i i could ever have imagined coming from her and um and it wasn't too long after that that i did wind up uh, getting a call to come in and 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 um and take a look around <laughs> at sesame street yeah so nice it was yeah i i remember that 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 one moment just it just it it, it was the most amazing thing because you know i you know jane along with jim invented this craft and um i just i really looked up to her yeah and and she and uh cheryl henson her daughter um uh they would come and you know see the different shows that uh i was in uh in new york and uh both amazing uh amazingly encouraging and just um just i'm incredible supporters of the art just just across the board um and cheryl uh yeah in particular i i think you know she really she really um put a lot of belief in me and and you know made me feel like oh i i could do this i could do this it was really yeah <laughs> they were both instrumental Oh, that's wonderful. So do you remember your first day on Sesame Street and the first puppet that you performed? Oh, yeah. Yeah, these are definitely things that <laughs> you remember. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, like I said, I, I was first asked to just come in and um, and observe. And that day, uh, yeah, I remember the, the I got a call. Um, and uh, from Danette DeSena, and she left a message saying, Kevin, Kevin Clash, has seen your tape because you, you, you know, you do all these workshops, but then you'd act, you know, have to also make a tape uh, of your work so that they'd have something to put on file. And uh, Kevin's seen your tape and he wants you to come in and observe on Sesame Street. So I, 
I went in and uh yeah, I think I totally blew off the job that I had um at the time. I was working for a, <laughs> a like post production house in New York. And I was like, Yeah, I gotta go do this. <laughs> uh, and um and not get paid. You know, just <laughs> go go in and observe, right? And uh so uh I did that. I went in and um and uh this was at Kaufman Studios in Queens. And uh the first person I I I meet is Kevin, he's there. And then the second person who walks into the room, I couldn't believe it, was Frank Oz. And this was off season too. This was like in the summer. And, you know, even I knew that Frank wasn't around that much mm -hmm. those days, you know, um, and, um, and, and Kevin introduces me to Frank as one of our new puppeteers. I was like, oh my gosh, wh what? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I was just coming in to observe, <laughs> I thought. And, um, yeah, that was that was amazing. That was the first, my first day on the set. And I, you know, I, I observed, I observed like a hawk and I did that for quite some time before I actually got to put a puppet on. And, um, let's see, I, I, I remember getting the first time I was scheduled. Um, and the the bit got bumped. I went in for the day, and the bit got bumped, so I didn't get to actually perform. And um, uh, so, and, and when they did do it, they they didn't call me, and they they just used whoever was around. Um, but I kept going in and observing, and um, it was getting close to Christmas time. I think it was maybe the last day before uh sesame street was um breaking for the holiday and um samuel ramey the opera singer was on set and uh he was there to sing uh uh a song of, of, about the letter l and mm -hmm. um and uh, Peter Lintz and David Rudman were there. Um, and they turned to me and they, you know, I'd been hanging around for quite some time. And and uh, and I think they felt bad for me because <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd been there for like I'd been coming in off and on throughout the season, you know for months <laughs> by that time and they 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 said well they kind of whispered to one another and then they turned to me and they said hey you want to why don't you why don't you grab a puppet and yeah david was kind of left in charge kevin wasn't there and and so he had the it, it was his prerogative and back in those days it, it, things were much looser and they could just put somebody in who wasn't <laughs> scheduled and you know didn't have a contract and didn't you know have uh you know all the official paperwork to go along uh, with it uh, you know i don't think they i don't think people can even be asked to come in and observe anymore um mm. uh because it's you know it's it's quite a lot to ask somebody to do that without any promise of work or payment. Um, but I was a, I was a kid at the time and I didn't have anything better to do, mm. especially since I, you know, I quit my job that day to, <laughs> right. to go in <laughs> the first time. Right. <laughs> um, uh, I was just, yeah, I was like in the back row. Mm. <laughs> um, and just lip syncing along with uh, everybody else who'd actually recorded the track. And it was a dream. I loved it. I loved it.
Oh, that's awesome. L uh, is the uh. letter that you love the most. L lets you go. Low, 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 low. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was, yeah. I, you just ask one question, you wind me up, and I, I'll, I'll just keep talking. But, um, <laughs> no worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, good times, good memories, for sure. That's great. Wonderful. Absol absolutely. So, uh, how did you eventually end up taking on the worlds of Frank's Sesame Street characters, Grover and Bert? Yeah. Well, uh, like I said, you know, it was a, a rare sight to see Frank on set back in, you know, those days. Um, and, um, you know, Cher Cheryl Henson was kind of looking after the the Muppet characters on Sesame Street, um, you know, from the perspective of the, the you know, the Henson company. Because it it was all still you know, um, all those characters were still owned outright by by uh, the Hensons, and so you know I think there was a there was a desire to to see those characters that Frank played more often on the show, and you know um, with Frank's availability being what it was, they. And they thought, huh, oh, well, maybe, maybe we could get somebody to kind of fill in and um, keep the characters visible. Right. Maybe not even say anything, <laughs> you know, but just, just, you know, have the characters there um, in a big group or whatever. And, and, you know, maybe, you know, if we get lucky, we'll find somebody who could, kind of become an understudy for Frank and be be there to carry the the role f roles forward and um so um you know I had been working on Sesame Street already for a few years nothing big like I'd just get a random call every now and then um for a big scene where they needed a lot of people <laughs> and um and I was working on Bear in the Big Blue House, mm -hmm. so I was I, I was um, in the mix, you know. My name was there on the list of you know, in the the pool of puppeteers um, at the time, and that's what they did. They just they took a list of everybody who um, w was working for the company or had worked for the company and. Uh, recent years um and uh and you know, and had them all come in and audition so that's what i did and um you know it was the first it was the scariest thing scariest thing ever because it was the first time i'd put my hand in any of those puppets and i knew that um i i you know i've always been kind of a mimic so i knew that uh you know what i could do with the voices and i felt this very strong connection to all the all those characters um when i was you know just growing up I just they're just a part of me like i'm sure you feel the same way you know you watch watch the show from a very early age and you're just right. yeah. constantly bombarded with these these characters and you love them so much it's just ah you just you feel them inside you and um that's so i felt i felt really good in that respect like i felt like i had a real connection to these characters i knew them i understood them and i knew that yeah i i can do you know uh something of you know an imitation of these these voices um but you know and i and i and i worked really hard on my puppetry uh but i'd never put my hand in any of these characters so that was that was the really scary thing when i auditioned and i was thrown for a loop too like uh, um uh because i was i was like oh whoa so this is how it works <laughs> 
<laughs> and and, mm-hmm. and also, oh, wow, Frank's hand is a lot larger than mine. I can barely <laughs> reach where I need to reach in these puppets. Um, but it, it, uh, yeah, it, it went well. And I got, I got the call, I got the call and it was, you know, another one of those days, like, you know, that time when, when Jane, uh, Henson mistook me for already working for the company as a puppeteer. Um, you know, then there was the time I got the call saying, uh, uh, Kevin wants you to come in and observe and then you know and then this uh call you know where uh we want you to we want you to do this we want you to to um uh fill in for frank and it, huh. you know just over the moon over the moon i was just uh it was, it was i can't explain how excited i was it was it was great <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's awesome and it still is you know i still love i Mm -hmm. still love getting to perform with these characters and and it's just yeah it's a dream come true for for me it's it's amazing and i absolutely yeah yeah i love it Mm -hmm. yeah so i'm kind of curious who were some of your favorite celebrity guests to work with i know you mentioned uh samuel uh rammy was your first Oh yeah, gosh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. Early on, um, I remember doing something with Trisha Yearwood. Okay. Um, you know, this is really early on. I remember doing some, uh, you know, singing a song. It was. Um, I think it was with um with Harry Monster and Baby Bear. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. I know what you're talking and, about, yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, about, right? um yeah. and then I I also did something with um well I just came in and I don't think I actually sang, I think I I just did a little bit with uh Mr. Johnson and Grover, uh, and then, and, and then, um, uh, Squirrel Nut Zippers, the band oh. came in and did a, did a big, a big song, uh, put a lid on it, I think was the song. Hmm. And I was a big fan of, of them, um, of the Squirrel Nut Zippers and, uh, and so that was that was really cool to be there and you know kind of kind of sort of share the scene with them but um those are some early ones but i mean since then so many so many <laughs> um yeah i think another one of uh, one of my favorites that was kind of early on that i think you got to work with was uh patty labelle for a gospel alphabet oh yeah that's right. Yeah, and you see, mm. <laughs> you see all the characters. Love that song. Oh yeah. yeah. There's so many, so many characters in that, and I even, you know, I recorded vocals for, uh, for that as well. But I didn't wind up puppeteering any of the uh, any of Frank's characters. I, <laughs> Kevin wanted me to assist him on Little Chrissy's hands at the piano. Oh, so, wow. Um, oh, wow. So <laughs> I didn't get to actually puppeteer to any of the tracks that I I recorded. Interesting. Um, yeah. Hmm. But, you know, it's kind of a – I kind of maybe dodged a bullet there because um, cause at least with Bert, um, uh, Noel McNeil was performing Bert that day. And um, – and – <laughs> he could tell you this story probably better than me. Um, and I don't know, somewhere in the song, I don't know if it was halfway or maybe right at the beginning, I don't know, 
one of Bert's eyes fell off. Oh my gosh! Oh, and so <laughs> oh that's boy. right. Rest, that's right. The, the yes. rest of the time, the rest of the bit, Knowles oh just. You know, he's 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 turning <laughs> Bert, you know, this way so you can't see um the the empty space where Bert's eye should be. And then and then oh and then like <laughs> um <laughs> and he's having to like turn real fast too if there's any kind of choreography, just so maybe you won't see it that it's missing. Um <laughs> <laughs> and he's trying to hide behind, you know, other characters. Um, and I, I'm sure he was just in panic mode. And um, I don't know. That might have been, that early on might have been very scarring to me. <laughs> so I, I'm grateful that Kevin <laughs> kept me close by. Um, he was he was really good about that, you know, making sure that, mm-hmm. um, you know, you as much as possible you weren't thrown into the deep end right. i mean it always felt like you were being thrown into the deep end whenever you did something on sesame street and you know but you you know you're not going to play a character full you know a full character with lines and everything your first time out you're going to be right. assisting and and then maybe doing some background characters and um, and I did a lot of that even after I, um, landed, uh, you know, those big, those bigger roles. Um, yeah. Awesome. So uh, over the years, Grover had his own segments, including Global Grover and, and Super Grover 2.0. What were those like? Oh, th- those are a lot of fun. Those were a lot of fun. Um, yeah, uh, Global Grover, yeah, so we did these, yeah, um, intros and outros to, uh, commissioned films that were shot all over the world, and it gave you a little insight to how people live elsewhere, and they're, really really wonderful films and um and we had some very funny bits that uh with grover where he's always you know he's always wearing a a costume and and uh or a hat or you know he's in you know or he's got some uh crazy propage and we'd we do some very funny stuff um introducing these films and then coming out of them and i just i it was so much fun and i remember my my parents one of the things i remember is my my parents came and visited me they which they never did in uh in new york they're i'm from texas and it was a long way away and my mom didn't like to fly and so they drove up from Texas to New York, and it'd been quite some time, uh, maybe ten years, since the last time they came and visited me. And they came up, and and Frankie Biondo pulled out. He was our number one cam- cameraman, camera op. Oh yeah, since day one. Mm-hmm. Since day, day one. one. And he, he, he was just you know he's he's like the mayor of Sesame Street. And he he just like welcomed them in and you know got some got some chairs for them and put them you know like you know front rows so you can see your your kid and um that was that was amazing that was amazing that's so that's something I you know personally remember from doing those and and then um also uh I remember a uh, fellow puppeteer jim martin oh yeah um, mm-hmm. who was always he was he's he was like a mentor to me i, I love jim he um uh, he i i remember he 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 just 
crystallized it so well for me because you know this is very early on and he he said one day these bits you're doing with global grover you know they're one day be you know grown the kids are watching it today they're going to grow up and they're going to remember it fondly and they're they're going to be remember when remember global grover remember those those funny bits and i just he put the things in such a perspective for me and at the time it was hard to it was very hard to see it but um i've remembered that and and now i and for a long time i, I always felt like people were whenever i went out in public people are, were always responding to um to frank's performances and because I just didn't have the the library of of uh, work behind me yet, mm -hmm. and you know now, yeah, you know, they may still be responding more to Frank than me, but I do have the library; it's there, and and there are you know there are uh, kids who who watch that stuff, and you know are adults now. It's just it's just amazing. Yes, I love those segments. They're they're great. Mayor of Sesame Street, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> just... I can... <laughs> Everybody loves Frankie. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's Everybody wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So um and it and it's fine if you can't, but I was wondering if maybe we could hear a little bit of uh Grover. Well, naturally, yes, of course. I would be happy to do that for you. <laughs> Hi Grover, how you doing? Hi. Hey, Grover. I, I am very, very good. <laughs> very good. How are, how are all of you? Hmm? We're doing really very, well. doing very good. Thank how's that? How's life very on well. Sesame Street? Oh, it is, it is so much fun. You know? Yeah. Yeah. This morning I had the play date with Elmo and um, we, we played hide and seek. And actually, if you could keep your voices down, I am still playing with him. He has not found me yet, and I do not want him to find me. Okay? <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Uh, so, moving on to the late 2000s, Bert and Ernie had their own animated segment, Bert and Ernie's Great Adventure, which oh, was yeah. a, a very fascinating segment. What was it like voicing Bert for that? Well, uh, you know, originally those were meant just for the international markets. And so we didn't know they were going to wind up on Sesame Street and be seen by a domestic audience at all. Um, and they had their, uh, their own uh, distinct tone, distinct from, you know, the the characters um, as you would see them normally on Sesame Street. And uh, so it was a, it, 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 it was hard. It was really different. Um, really different um, from what I was used to doing with Bert and Ernie. And, um, you know, it was hard in, in a number of ways because you, yeah, the tone was slightly different, and, um, and you're trying to imagine the physicality of the characters before they're they've been animated, and um, I find that that's always hard to do. You know, you're you're as a puppeteer, you're in control of how the character looks and moves and behaves. And uh, you have to give up a lot of that control when you voice animation. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and they were very physical. You know, they, it, it, they wound up being beautiful spots. Um, the Missouri brothers, I believe, um, did those. 
and they're really cool looking. Um, oh yeah. But the, you know, the, but it's, it was, you know, it was so different from what we were doing on the show. Um, it, it took, you know, it took a lot of, it was a lot of work, a lot of work to, <laughs> you know, try and imagine, okay, what's happening now <laughs> and what do you need from, from me, uh, to, you know, to make this work. Um, so yeah, I, mu I much prefer to puppeteer. Uh, Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but, but you know, that, that being said, I'm very proud of the work we did on those and, and, uh, we did a animated, you know, we've done a lot of animation since and, uh, including the monster at the end of this special is that what it's called I forget. oh yeah right based on the book yeah classic yeah. book yeah oh yeah yeah and that was um i'm really proud of that really proud of that 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 was and that was that was hard <laughs> that was really hard too <laughs> just trying to imagine everything that's that's going to happen you know that hasn't hasn't uh been visualized yet but yeah, yeah, you know, somebody's describing it to you, and you're like, okay, so, so is it is it going to go across the screen really fast, or is it going to be slow? Is it going to stop in the middle and look this way and that way, and you know, like every little thing, um, you have to anticipate. Um, but yeah, that that turned out really nicely. <laughs> but again, you know, I I love puppets so. Um, if, if, if I have a choice, it's always going to be with a puppet. Right. Absolutely. So in 2015, you began performing as the understudy for Oscar before eventually inheriting the character. What went into the process of understudying for Oscar? Well, it was, it was a bit of a different situation obviously with Carol than it was with Frank um you know with with Frank I don't think I don't think any of us knew um where it was necessarily headed you know um it you, you know uh David Rudman and myself were given Frank's blessing to perform his characters in his absence. Um, but it, I think, you know, initially at least it was with the idea that, um, you know, Frank would show up when he could. And, um, and, uh, you know, with Carol, it was, much more a, a situation where um where carol was you know he was handing the baton and you, you know that was the the intention with that knowledge and um so initially uh i was i was lip syncing to carol on set um, even though he was, you know, he was happy with me doing the voice and everything, you know, we all wanted him to keep on, um, performing in whatever capacity he could for as long as possible. And when Carol wasn't physically able to really, you know, keep his arm up over his head and, you know, assume all these crazy positions we assume, he would still come in and sit off to the side um and and you know watch and read this script and and voice the character live and i would catch his performance and lip sync live which was a challenge but uh i was up for it um and uh and that was that was really fun it was fun having him there and right. being able being able to like in between takes go over and you know say okay well 
what you know what would you like <laughs> how do you see oscar doing this and you know he would tell me and and you know i i could go in with you know a lot of confidence that you know i'm doing i'm doing what carol would um because he just told me <laughs> yeah right uh, and uh we did that for uh a uh, season or two like that and then then you know the then we did some episodes where you know i i voiced the character and carol looped afterwards and um and i even remember there was one appearance so um i think it was on noggin the sunny side up show where oh and sprout yeah yes uh, sprout yeah, yeah uh sprout, -huh. sprout. <laughs> where <laughs> the idea was that i was just laying down uh a scratch vocal and carol was going to come in and, and loop it and he came in and looped some of it but not all of it <laughs> and, and and I was just mortified when I saw it because I was like, oh, no, this is this is, you know, the nightmare situation where you 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 hear both of us side by side. <laughs> and I remember that day being like, oh, my voice is not in a it's not in a good place. Um, and, uh, you know, thank goodness. This is just a scratch vocal. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we, yeah, we did it all different ways, but you know, it, the the idea. All I think, you know, everybody was on board, you know, with this, and and Carol, you know, he 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 made the decision to have me do it, and he was happy with it, and I I I was happy that he was happy. Uh, yeah, because he uh. he's the absolute best. I he's. You know, when you think of uh, inspirational figures, he's he's up there, you know, right at the top for me, because he's just he was always um, so grateful for his lot in life. He loved, loved, loved puppeteering Big Bird and Oscar. It was just the best, the best thing, and. You saw that uh, every single day that he came in uh, to work. He was happy to be there, and um, and he kept doing it, and he just kept doing it and doing it, you know, into his 80s. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Absolutely amazing. So, um, yeah, so, you know, um, my generation, we all – we all look to we all look to Carol and and his generation uh as to you know to for some indication of like just how long can you do this for <laughs> right know, what happens to your body when you're like this um for so many hours on end of course and uh and he, he, he proved it could be done for a very long time. Um, you know, so you know, sadly we lost, some, you know, a lot of the others um, before they, you know, could prove us, prove to us just how long you could physically do this as well. Um, but Dave Gold still does it. And oh yeah, he's got, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, he he's got a lot of, he's he, he's endured a lot, <laughs> um, you know, a lot of discomfort and and uh, and uh, a lot of abuse to his his body, uh, puppeteering, but he's still doing it. God rest, yeah. That's God bless sweet. him. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Moving on from uh, Sesame Street, we mentioned uh, you also puppeteered on Bear in the Big Blue House, performing yeah. 
Harry the Duck and also kind of doubling for characters too. What was it like working on that show? That was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah, mostly what I did was I doubled for uh, Tyler Bunch and Peter Lentz um, because they each had two characters, um, main characters on the show. And, um, and so I would wind up playing, you know, one of the characters that I um, – was uh on screen at the same time and uh and that was another case where we would we would do it live mm -hmm. they tyler and peter were both really good at throwing their voices for for other characters that they performed while they're performing um <laughs> Uh, another character and it, it's i i'm not very good at that i've done it um and you know passably i think but uh i don't like doing it it's hard <laughs> <laughs> it's a real split focus kind of thing and they're just so good at that and uh i i would i just had a lot of fun catching their performances and lip syncing to them and um and just being there on that set and having, uh, I, I really valued the screen time that I got. It was, it was, it was you know, good practice, good practice. Um, but yeah, uh, in debt to those guys, you know, they, I think they found themselves needing an extra hand early on and, and they said, hey, what about Eric? And so I got called in to do that quite a bit, and it was it was a lot of fun. And eventually, uh, yeah, um, I got to play a, a character of my own on the show, uh, even if it was just for an episode or two. And yeah, so and and sing a song on uh, too. We got um, that was probably the first song that I got to. Re record um for for a show for a televised show um got to sing with harry as harry with uh with bear it's a really really sweet song oh yeah um, the uh mm -hmm. yeah the music for bear in the big blue house is really phenomenal oh yeah everything about the show mm -hmm. And including and, the music. Yeah, Peter Lurie, Brian Woodbury, a whole bunch of wonderful composers on that show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. such and, a and, wonderful you know, show. We got, we got the benefit of some of their talent on um, the Book of Pooh as well. Oh, yeah. They they moved on to do that with Mitchell Kriegman, who uh, spearheaded both of those shows. Yep, and uh, speaking of the Book of Pooh, uh, for those who don't know, uh, it used tabletop puppetry. How would you compare that style of puppetry to, say, like a Muppet style kind of puppetry? Yeah, well, on very rare occasions, we would do something not too dissimilar um, on Sesame Street, but it would be very rare. Um, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, it's not something we do very, very often. Um, I'd been doing some of that kind of stuff in the live theater that I was doing, mm -hmm. uh, around town. Um, but, uh, but it is very, it's very different from the traditional mouth puppets that uh you you typically see for for muppet style productions um there's a lot of collaboration that goes on a ton um you know you're always you know in puppetry it, you know almost you know a lot of the time you're working with assistants and and having to work in concert um but usually not as many 
assistants. <laughs> Usually it's not as many people working on a single character at a time right. as you have with tabletop puppetry and what we did in, on Book of Pooh. So, um, so that, you know, the, there's, and when you have so many moving parts, so many people who need to work as one, uh, rehearsal really helps. So we were rehearsing just nonstop, it felt like, um, on that show. If we weren't, we had a room dedicated just off to the side uh, of the floor uh, where, where you know, we would take turns going in and working with our teams to, um, you know, be prepared for the next scene. Uh, it was very very uh you know it, it required a lot of discipline um because we were also lip syncing to pre-recorded performances and um so that you know that that was good because we all could go off and listen to the same uh vocal tracks and and get familiar with the same rhythms and um and then you know when we get together to rehearse we at least had that as a a, a, a groundwork and it was uh yeah but it was i just remember rehearsing 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 <laughs> you know we do a scene and then it's like okay next next scene what are we what are we doing and i i had all sorts you know i had to like the way i did it and i think i think a number of the other performers did too i i played the head and and torso of the characters i performed uh piglet and rue oh nice and, and so we you know uh and and tyler did that with Tigger and Peter did that with uh, Winnie and um, we, you know, I think we all did kind of the same thing where we listened to the track over and over and we might make some notes in the script, you know, some ideas, uh, you know, of, you know, what the arms and legs could be doing at the same time. And then we'd work with our team, um, and and you know get everybody in sync, and they'd come up with great ideas too, and you know it was a real collaboration. It was a, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. <laughs> um, but it was it was a um, you know one of the first prod projects that used a virtual set. And we were we shot on green, and and we were standing mostly with green tables. Everything's green, and and um, and that was a real trip. And we would see. Usually, we would we would see the the comp as we were performing live. Um, yeah, and there were there was a lot of downtime because there was <laughs> there'd be glitches with the computers and software, um, but it was a real trip, you know, just being transported to this other, um, you know, virtual environment. Um, but there was also a lot of green, a lot of green. Yes. And we yeah, I've seen a bunch of behind the scenes pictures of it. It's just crazy because, you know, like each character, like you mentioned, took like three different people to like work mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that, and we did like, I feel like we did two seasons almost back to back. We, mm -hmm. were, we shot for um, over a year, I feel like. I could be wrong. Um, and we shot for a long time. And it 
in in just going into an environment where there's just one color <laughs> that you see all day long <laughs> um you know i'm really curious what uh you know if we had a a psychologist on set <laughs> um kind of tracking the effects of of you know this group of people just seeing the color green all day <laughs> long for a year um you know what uh, you know, how that how that affected all of us i feel like it it, it you know it, it, i I, I know that it affected me somehow. I'm not oh, sure. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Right, yeah. I'd be curious to find out. Yeah. So in terms of the uh, the Disney Muppets, what was your first? Well, I know you said, of course, it was before, you know, the whole Disney thing. But what was your first project with the uh, Muppet show, Muppets? Okay, well, um, well, let's see. I You know, I think... Um, you know, after, I think kind of a similar thing happened over there with the, with the classic Muppet show characters, you know, they were getting a lot of calls for, for, um, Frank's characters, particularly Miss Piggy. And they wanted, they, they wanted, you know, somebody to be able to, to stand in for Frank when he wasn't available. So it was the same kind of process and, you know, all these auditions, all these auditions, you know, all these people audition and, um, you know, I think, uh, I was, you know, I was New York based and, um, yeah, the, the, the Hensons knew me, but I don't think the whole operation in, in Hollywood and, and um, was, as familiar with my work. And so um, I think there was, you, you know, it, it, I just had had to prove myself all over again. And um, uh, so the first thing I did actually is I, I voiced, a, I, I did the voice for Miss Piggy and somebody else puppeteered it. Um, for a Virgin Atlantic commercial, hmm. um, mm -hmm. and uh, which I don't think even aired over here, you know, yeah, I think it was Virgin, pretty sure it was, and um, and you know, and that's that's the way they were gonna handle it for a little while, like, oh, Eric will just do the voice, like, okay, that didn't last. <laughs> like I, I that's the only. I think that's the only thing I I voiced and didn't puppeteer, you know, back in that at that time. Um, that was popular at the time, hmm. and I did. So I did that. It was just like interview style stuff, and um, and I made an appearance on the Today Show. Uh. And, uh, in, oh, and, but the first thing that anybody probably saw was, um, was something from Muppet Fest. Oh, okay. Little, oh, yeah, yeah. Pre taped, like a, you know, pre taped, um, message for a, you know, a fan fest in hollywood um i can't remember where where they held it but um you know it was like a it's like a convention for for muppet fans it's like the one and only time they did it mm -hmm. and they did you know they did a a live muppet show there and um uh, all sorts of really wonderful um you know, experiences for for muppet fans and you know a lot of you know personal contact with with the muppet f performers and everything but um i 
I recorded something from Miss Piggy. Um, and it was just probably the most perfect way to introduce me as Miss Piggy to uh, to fans because, well, um, one, I wasn't there in person, so nobody could you know, put me in a chokehold. But, <laughs> uh, but two, uh, nobody expect nobody really expected Frank to show up to something like this, so it made complete sense um, for uh, for Miss Piggy to show up in in a videotaped message, and and so like it just seemed oh yeah yeah. I, yeah, Frank's not going to come to to Muppet Fest, you know. Right, yeah. Didn't expect right. that. Didn't expect that. Yeah. So so yeah, naturally what he did was he he did a little pre-taped message. That's nice. Let's 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 watch that. And they they showed this pre-taped message to to people. And you know, in whereas the at Muppet Fest, you could see um you know all the performers who were there. You could see, uh, you could see them and see who was performing who. Um, you couldn't see me, and it, and I think, I think you know if we fooled anybody, um, you know the the you know, there. If we fooled anybody, it um. Well, if we were going to fool anybody, that was the way we were going to do it. <laughs> right, yeah. And um this short greeting and it was kind of kind of and you know, once you get the the blessing of the 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 fans, um you know, then the rest of the world kind of takes takes their cue off of you know, the real diehards and hardcore yeah. fans. Right. That's usually the way it is. You know, you, 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 you know, you disgruntle some fans and then the rest of the world just kind of picks up on that. And yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I didn't like that either. It's like, did you see it? No, but I hear it's awful. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, uh, so I don't know. It, um, it, 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 it felt, it felt like a good way to introduce, uh, my version of Miss P to, to folks. Um, and, uh, and yeah. And then after that, you know, it, it, it wasn't too long after that, that I wound up doing, uh, we did, uh, Weezer music. Oh, video. yes. Oh, yeah. 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 And that was my first time performing Fozzie. Oh, uh, I remember, I remember um, Steve Whitmire turning to me and saying, "Hey, why don't you grab Fozzie? We could really use him in this the scene right here." Uh, I was like, uh, "Is that okay? Are people okay with that?" Yeah. And um, I mean, the idea was that I was. I I think that same. May that same week that we were shooting that, uh, we were doing a read through of the Very Merry Muppet Christmas movie, and I was, oh yes, I was reading Fozzie for that too, yeah. was, and and you know, um, but I hadn't performed him yet, and so that was the first time I, I performed Fozzie, and and then, yeah, and then we did the. We did the Very Merry Muppet Christmas movie, and and uh, and yeah, it was just like off, off at the races, you know, just um, this huge thing that came very shortly after these smaller appearances here and there, um, and and that you know that was. That was a great experience. Absolutely. Great experience. Yeah. Yep. Really, you know, after that, I felt like, okay, I, I'm, 
<laughs> you know, if you, uh, I, you know, something like that, you're either going to crumble or you're going to, you're going to, uh, you're going to soar. And I don't, you know, I felt pretty good after doing that, at least, you know, I felt yeah. like I, all along, I felt like I was up to the task, but then you got to prove it and of prove course, it to others, yeah. but also to yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um. So I know a lot of Muppets uh, fans are, are wondering: Is it fine if we can hear a bit of both Fozzie and Miss Piggy? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, I am always available. Okay, you know, weddings, bar mitzvahs, podcasts. You know, all absolutely anytime. Just, just give me a call, please. Please. Okay. <laughs> we'll do Fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's gonna it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get moi on the air. Right, because you're so you know busy with you know your fashion job and everything. Yes, exactly. You understand. You understand moi. Thank you. <laughs> Wait a second. Well, You're not recording this right now, are you? <laughs> that's great How, how's that uh, how's kermit doing what you want me to do a kermit voice now too <laughs> <laughs> i said how, how's kermit no. I, I was asking Come on Jake, I was you asking, gotta be more specific with this i was asking miss, I was asking miss piggy how's, how's oh. kermit <laughs> uh. oh that's great so before we uh, wrap up, I know uh, I know uh, Matt had a question about uh, one of the recent things you uh, I, got to do I with do, the Muppets. I do, I do. There yeah, is one thing absolutely. I want. There's there is one thing I wanted to show though. I've had this for about eight years now, and I couldn't resist showing this. Could we have a post production? Oh uh, yeah. This is, is, uh, this, is life? this is Guide to Life. This is Miss Piggy's first book. Um, it's not in the best shape, obviously. Uh, this was for uh, this was released way back in 1981. Yeah. Uh, mine, mine is a, a 83 uh, reprinting, but I don't care. It is. Who, it who's is the a, author credited on that? Um, well, it, what is Miss Piggy? But um, yeah, let me just look here. I believe. Do they, do they name anybody else? Yes, they do. The they, they yeah. name uh, Henry Beard was the that's, one. That's that's. Um, yes. I met I met Henry, Henry Beard, um, when I was first starting out, and he he he, he said, you know, I, I wrote Miss Piggy's Guide to Life. I said, what? <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. It's so it, yeah, so cool. You you know yeah you, I you you, you 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 know. I feel like everywhere I go, I I meet a friend of the Muppets. Oh yeah, uh, it's yeah. so cool. Oh, Somebody it's... you know, and Jim and Frank. They, they, you know, made the rounds. They went everywhere. They, you know, they came into contact with so many people. I, I tell you, like, for the first, uh, I don't know, first ten years I was doing this. I, I, everywhere I went, I met somebody who had worked with Jim, and or Frank, and they, and they just, uh, always inevitably um had a wonderful story to share and just this uh deep profound love for for jim and frank and all of the muppets and it is so great so great to come across that absolutely and, you know especially when i was starting yeah 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 i mean uh the i've had this uh it was yeah. actually a gift to me uh for my 16th birthday goodness that was like almost eight years ago and uh post production can we get a shot of especially this photo right here i mean these i gotta say miss piggy you look stunning in these and these photos they're amazing um just the outfits of, of these even way back when they're just amazing even the black and white ones too let me see if i can find one real quick oh there's one on the back um, oh yeah there's one on the back right here yes um oh it's it, it is a absolutely wonderful Aren't I book. beautiful and, uh, yes yes you definitely i can't are. really see the pictures all that well from here but it doesn't me, matter uh, there we go oh yeah if there we go it's it's... i know 
it looks good. Yes, it, it definitely does. Absolutely for sure. Again, I've had this <laughs> since 2016. Uh, if, if you folks don't have a copy, get it. It, it, it I, I'm, I'm serious about this. It is, it it's really very is funny, too. Book. Very funny. Oh, yes, I remember, absolutely. I think, I, think I, I want to say that Henry Beard wrote the, the, uh, the monologue that Miss Piggy, um, that Miss Piggy delivered, um, in honor of Lily Tomlin, at uh, when she was uh, awarded the Mark Twain Prize for comedy. Oh wow! Oh yeah. wow! That's that's that's. It's wonderful. So your one of your newest projects, Gordon, yeah, yeah. that was was uh, M- the Muppets Mayhem. Uh, yeah, which love is Muppets Mayhem. Absolutely amazing. Love uh, that series. Not, so great. Absolutely amazing. Uh, could you share any stories from working on that? Oh, and first, congrats on the uh, nominations. Yes, congratulations. Yes, congratulations. yes of course. <laughs> Could not forget about that. Of course. It's uh, it's very cool that that um. Uh... The art of puppetry is being recognized with its own categories now. It's really, really amazing. Um, and so Muppets Mayhem, a uh, lot of fun, a lot of fun. I I had so much fun doing that. Um, and um, you know, partly because I didn't. You know, I, I I didn't have to carry the same kind of load that I do on a lot of other projects. <laughs> I think <laughs> I, it was uh, yeah. it was not. Uh, you know, the pressure was was kind of off me. I didn't have to learn a lot of lines. Um, <laughs> you know, because animal can't really talk. So, <laughs> um, uh, but. No, the the quality of the show is just so high. It's so wonderful working um, on these shows where you have such talented writers and um, and and everybody is there with the same goal in mind. Um, in in you know, and everybody just they everybody wants to be there too like yeah there's nobody mm-hmm. no nobody who's just you know they just said yes cuz you know it's a job <laughs> i no everybody everybody um loved being there and, and yeah you know it was a real you know we we formed a a really nice uh family very quickly and I'm sad that we're not all coming back together to to do it again anytime soon, at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, we we I'm very grateful too that we we had the the opportunity to come together and and make some magic, you know. Yeah, and there, I I just love what I love most about Muppets Mayhem was the kind of relationship between you know the the mayhem and then the human cast you know oh, like yeah. moog and yes yeah. you know all those wonderful yeah. Taj, human cast yeah, he, yeah. He, he's yeah he's incredible he's an incredible actor and such a such a nice guy like the the moment you meet him you just you you, you know he puts a smile on your face he's just that's that's who he is <laughs> you know he's just one of those people who is just um a bundle of positivity and and you just you know you want to be his friend no oh, um, yeah oh yes yeah he's perfectly cast and um yeah and the rest of the cast is incredible too and um you know uh lily and and, and sarah and anders uh ter- all terrific but i you know i loved i i loved the show for a, a bundle of reasons, you know, the writing was spectacular, but you know, that you know, that says a lot too. Like there's there's a lot that goes into um in, in into writing successfully for the Muppets. And to take 
you know, to take these uh, lesser known Muppet characters, you know, take the, you know, they're Muppets to begin with. <laughs> yes. Yeah. These are, you know, yeah. kind of niche characters. Um, and to treat them uh, respectfully and faithfully and at the same time broaden their uh their story and um go places that we've never seen them go to absolutely i, I think it's just <laughs> it's remarkable it's remarkable yes oh, yeah. absolutely you know, absolutely something absolutely. that we've never seen with those with those characters before and, uh -huh. and yet you know it still all feels very very in character very faithful to yeah. uh to to who they are and to the muppets as a whole absolutely yep absolutely so uh this last question that jake is about to ask we usually say for last and we ask every guest this question go ahead jake thank you matt so of course this podcast is called jake's happy nostalgia show there you go. Uh, when you think of nostalgia, what do you think of, or in your own words, how would you define the word nostalgia? Mm -mm -mm. Um, for me, nostalgia is uh, is getting to uh, relive my childhood uh, through the eyes of my children i i love sharing the things that um made me happy when i was a child with my own kids um yeah there's nothing better than that and then you know in 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 uh yeah i s some of it might s stick a lot of it probably won't for my kids but it's you know the act of sharing that is is really um putting nostalgia to use to some use i feel like you know not yeah i mean you can go down memory lane and and smile about the things that made you happy when you were younger yeah um, oh but, yeah you know share being able to share it is really special. I've really enjoyed that, and this time of year, especially, it's oh yeah, fun to watch the old mm -hmm. Rankin and Bass holiday special. Oh yeah, classic. Absolutely, yes. Uh, I get I get teary eyed every single time I watch uh, a year without a Santa Claus. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. classic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Love it, love it. Yeah. Well, well, Eric, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. This was a blast. Yes, thank hey, you. Absolutely. Yes, it was thank for me too. I hope I hope uh, you know, you heard some new stories and uh, um yeah, I didn't bore you too much. <laughs> no, no, no worries no at worries, all. No worries. And, uh, Not at all. And, and you and for what you're doing and and you know, first of all, you know, congratulations with all the Muppets mayhem and everything. And also and thank you and you know, thank you so much for what you've done to be a part of our lives and for what you're doing to keep the legacy, legacy of the characters alive, you know, with Sesame and the Muppets and everything where you're doing I think we're thinking we you're doing such an incredible job and and uh, for what you're doing it means so much for the future generations and keep up the great work where you're doing and can I wait what's next in store? I, I you I can't tell you how much that means to me. Uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, of course. You know, I, it's my pleasure. I, I do what I can to keep um, the legacy alive, but you know, it, it's you all, fans, who really keep it alive. Absolutely, so of course. Keep, thank keep, you. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, you know, keep waving that flag. Absolutely. And, uh, yes. And. Uh, yeah, I, I I appreciate you all. Absolutely. Really do. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Likewise. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day, Eric. Keep in touch. I'll let you know when this goes up. Thank you. Okay. Take right. care, all. All right. Bye bye. Take Enjoy care, your Eric. holidays. See ya. Happy holidays. Happy See holidays. Ya. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. And it's goodbye from us as well, everyone. We absolutely enjoyed our time with uh, Eric Jacobson. Uh, 
uh, season 54 of Sesame Street is currently uh, streaming on Max. Um, Muppets Mayhem and a whole bunch of other Muppet projects he's done are streaming on Disney Plus, so check out those. Uh, but again, thanks, thank you all for joining us. Keep on the lookout for more wonderful interviews coming your way. And as always, what do we say, Jake? Keep nostalgia alive. Take care, everyone. See you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye. Hello there, it's me again. I just wanted to come back and just say some final words. As you know by now, this episode marks our 200th Jake's Happiness Dodger Show episode. My goodness, I can't believe I'm saying that. We certainly have come a long, long way since our very beginnings. I just want to take this moment on behalf of all of us and just say thank you to not only the guests who have expressed their enthusiasm of being on the show, but those who have said very kind words about the show and about us. Thank you so much. It really means a lot. Thank you to everybody who's also helped us get guests, too. We truly appreciate it very much. But most importantly, thank you, our viewers and listeners. Your support and enthusiasm and excitement means more than you could ever imagine. Thank you. Also, very recently, our YouTube channel hit 1,000 subscribers. Yes, 1,000. I can't believe that either. So, what did we do to celebrate? A live stream. If you'd like to check it out, head on over to our YouTube channel and go to the live section. You'll see the 1K subscriber celebration. And it was a lot of fun. And we will definitely do more of these in the future. So stay tuned on that on our YouTube page. So what's ahead for us? Well, you'll just have to wait and see. There's not a lot I can say right now. But what I can say is that we have a lot of exciting interviews ahead, a lot of wonderful episodes, and a lot of really cool stuff coming up very, very soon. So you'll want to stay tuned. But for now, thank you. Thank you for your support over the last 200 episodes, and we're really excited for the next 200. Until we meet again from all of us, this is Matt Bingle. Thank you very much for joining us. And until next time, as always, keep nostalgia alive. Peace. Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye.